Hey everybody, Jochen Haydn here, and I'm back with the War in the Pacific Logic vs. Haydn campaign. We're playing Scenario 1. This is the 8th of March, 1942, Turn 92, Combat Replay and the Intel Analysis. Let's see what happened. Okay, here we go, March 8th, Logic campaign. Man, I wonder what's going on near Darwin. That's, the, that's what I'm really curious about this turn. More than anything else. Oh, 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 no, come on, oh, oh, got Mark 14 again, man, oh, the Tenryu, it would have been so great to sink that thing, come on, look at this, okay, okay, Mark 14 torpedoes fail us again, we get four torpedoes launched at the Tenryu, we get a hit, no explosion, and there we go. We put a dent in the hole, and that's about it. Dang it. At least we know he's using that routing, right? Come on, let's get some let's get some bombers in here. Come on. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Come on, here we go. Alright, so we get some B-17s into Bangkok. We destroy a bedding on the ground. Get a little bit of damage to the runway as well. Excellent. Oh, here we go. All right. So the overcast is probably not helping us here. We do get some B-17Ds in, but we don't hit anything. Okay, more B-17s coming into the ball. And another, this is probably going to be a wash with the weather being what it is. Bangkok. Nice. Nice. Okay. Another Betty is reported destroyed on the ground. So we're making a little bit of progress here. Okay. We got the the, uh, the Liberators coming in to the ball. And again, I, I think we're not going to get anything here because of the weather. Bangkok, on the other hand, is another story. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Another, oh, so now I got a Nell destroyed. Yeah, more, more, more. More. Give me some more. Yep. Yep. Excellent. We are just, we're just chipping away, man. This is good stuff. So our night bombers are coming in from Rangoon. As you can see the red line, it kind of shows you where they're coming from. Um... So also that red line also kind of indicates the distance away that they're that they're spotted. See, Rabal, I'm sorry, the rate is spotted at 48 nautical miles. Each hex is about 46 miles. So if you start from the center here and draw your line out, that's about the distance that they're spotted. Anyway, get more stuff killed on the ground. Good, good job. Okay, I'm very happy with that nighttime performance. No complaints. Finally. All right. Now we're in the daytime. Coast Watch is reporting some ships in port. <gasps> oh. Oh. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Ah. Uh. Oh, these Mark 14s are so infuriating. Oh, man. That's that's twice now where our subs actually fire on something. And we get a hit. No explosion. <sighs> All right. At least my subs are doing something. All right. Ooh, that's not good. Oh man, okay, so Babel might not be the best place to be staking out. Or at least that close. He's got definitely got some ASW aircraft operating there. Oh, here we go. Alright, so here we are in China. 
all over the place. Lots of recon activity going on right now. That's where all those camera clicks are. Okay. Severe storms over target. That's a good thing for us. Alright. You see the casualty rates. Are, for one, these bombers aren't very good. And two, casualty rates are low. Severe storms and hex and good terrain. Good stuff. Heavy rain over target. That will also help us a little bit. But the terrain I don't think is that great. I'm not sure what that terrain is. It may be rough. Uh, some minor casualties here. He's definitely planning something. Probably an attack here. He's trying to soften it up. Um, whatever I said about that red line earlier, just forget it. I don't think that's a thing at all. I don't know what I was talking about. That line is just showing you estimated direction of travel. I don't think the distance of it really means anything. So... Whatever I said about the line and distance, uh, disregard. Yeah, I don't think that means anything. At least I don't think it does. Somebody correct me. If you know better, tell me, does the distance of this red line indicate how far out that's spotted, or is that really nothing? Hmm, see, that one's longer. Yeah, no, I don't think it means anything because the last one was like 20 nautical miles. This was 18, but it's twice as long. That line means nothing. Other than a direction of travel. Hmm. Now he's attacking Hen Yang. Alright. With fighter escort. Mm, casualties are... Mm, okay. Clear sky is not helping us, and the terrain is is regular clear terrain there so it, it this is gonna stink any casualties we take here or any bombing raid here is gonna cost us more just because the terrain is so bad and there's really nothing we can do about it all right it's not too bad did I see that right how many zeros Oh, just three. Okay. Okay, so that was a not too bad of an AM phase. Now we're going into the PM phase of the air. Man, we got to be careful around Babel. His nails are really out for blood today. You guys saw those convoys near, near Darwin, right? Those task forces. Okay, that PM phase was very uneventful. We should be getting into ground combat here if there's any. My guess is maybe maybe in Malay a little bit, but not much else. Okay, I, I lied. So these guys are going for it here. So it looks like we have one division, two brigades, Armored cars, already a headquarters, and a, a Chinese division, which are typically not very good. They will easily destroy these two units. Or cause them to retreat. That's fine, too. Honestly, that was actually the best possible outcome, despite the heavy losses here. We did stop him from moving for a turn, and those units did retreat into Henyang. So that's, like, the best possible place for them to go. Uh, okay. Oh, Terracan. Forgot about this. Yeah, this is, um... 
I don't know. I don't want to say anything because I've been wrong like every single time, but this does not look good. I'll, I'll put it to you that way. Dang it. There it is. It's over. Oh, man. Well, that's the end of Terra Can, guys. We tried. It, we tied him up for a while, right? We kept him busy for about a month. A couple weeks, anyway. He lost a lot of aircraft, lost a lot of troops, but eventually we just could not hold. So, he has finally neutralized Terracan, and now all that oil and fuel is his for the taking. Hmm. Man, I hope these guys do better, at least. Yep, they held out. They are really starting to take a lot more casualties, though, this time around. So, the poor 12th Indian Brigade, who's been eating their boots for food, are really down to the last little bits here. Alright, so, there you go. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay, these airfields expanding are giving us points, and Calcutta going up to size 8 has huge implications, huge positive implications for our campaign, and I'll show you why in just a minute. little gin and tonic for my campaign here. It's British gin, of course, Tanqueray. Because you have to drink that when you're playing the Allied campaign, right? All right, let's see if we get any reinforcements here. Oh, there we go. Couple, couple destroyers. Some some units there, a tanker and Abaddon it looked like or Aiden. Uh, cool. Well, let's um, we'll take a look at it. Okay, I think this Vic story for this turn is this thing here. It looks like we got some sort of invasion in the Timor Sea, so we'll cover that in just a minute. Let's look at the numbers. Okay, for aircraft losses today, I kind of want to point something out to you. Uh, do you see this negative three and four? Um, at first I thought this was a desync or some sort of weird uh, turn anomaly, but okay, watch this. Aircraft losses. Uh, 1 to 10. So if you take 4 and minus 3, you get 1, right? So I talked to somebody on my Discord and they say that if you disband a unit or do other stuff like that, they, like your aircraft units, sometimes you'll see weird numbers like that. And I did actually convert some aircraft last turn from one type to another, so I think that's what made those numbers look weird. Anyway, um, we managed to smash four Bettys on the ground today, and he lost another four to Ops. Uh, he lost Adina, a Tojo, and this is really nice. To, he loses his Tojos because he only starts off with a few of those at the beginning of the campaign, and it takes a while for him to build more. So it's always nice when we can shoot one of these guys down or destroy one, right? Or Ops loss, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he also lost a nail on the ground, so our ground bombing took out five aircraft on the ground today at Bangkok, and then we only lose to Singapore in trade. Not too bad. So, pilot losses. It's a little odd today. It says two, two wounded, one KIA. It, it's bizarre, isn't it? I'm not entirely sure what's going on with these numbers today. If you guys have seen something like this before, let me know. But now it's looking more likely that something ain't right. Because it's showing that we lost some pilots today. And I don't see where we did. A little weird, right? I still think it's a desync. But I don't know. Let's look at wounded pilots. We have a Marine Corps pilot, Captain Henderson. We're going to transfer him to the reserve. And Donovan transferred to reserve. All right, looking over here. We are getting Donovan back. It's awesome. And I honestly forgot the name of the other guy, but let's look for Tanner B. Still doesn't have a return date, but we'll keep watching for that. All right, so uh, army lost points. Nothing significant here this turn. Uh, ship sunk this turn nothing still holding at 344 the Japanese are still showing 78 ships sunk But I believe that number to be a bit higher than that, but that's all the intel we have still 
my OCD is making me really obsessed about this. Like, where did these losses come from? I, I don't really know. See, it just doesn't make sense. 10 to 1. And the only aircraft that we're showing is lost this turn is a Singapore. It's weird. Overall status of points for this turn is 16,140 to 10,657. We're, we're clinging on to life here with this ratio. It's about one point. I don't know, 1.5, something like that. Not enough to win right now for him. But he's got nine months to make something big happen here. All right, so I've already be gone through the combat SIGINT and OPS reports. And the combat reports, there's nothing to talk about. But SIGINT actually has quite a bit of stuff. Look at this. Let's start off the top. We got a radio call, a 116.70. And that's over here. That's about three hexes to the east of Norfolk Island. So that's telling me he's got ships out here doing something. Either subs or ships are out here operating and doing something over here. Okay. Next, we have uh, a mention of the Kure SNLF. Uh, heading to Davao, which is over here in the Philippines. So we know that he's coming in here to Davao. And he's landing an SNLF unit to capture this base. And it's got quite a bit of stuff on there for him. All those supplies and, and resources. The base is worth some points. And he's going to cut off a retreat path for us. So he's going to be landing on Davao here soon. I'm wondering if it might be prudent to take this sub that's already detected. Right? And give it a new patrol zone right here. In anticipation for that ship eventually showing up. Let's see what we get out of that. That might be, that might be fun. All right, uh, next we got radio transmissions at 134.140. And let's take a look at that. And that's somewhere out here near the Ellis Islands. So what I say it was, it was uh, 134.40. It's something like right here, 134.40. So that's telling us he has some sort of shipping going on out here too. I have no idea what that could possibly be, but it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, we have no visibility on what that might be out there right now. Okay, another uh, interesting note on the SIGINT is this. Where is it at? Uh, it was something about, yeah, this air defense regiment on loaded on a Japanese AP moving to Ponape. This is the second consecutive term where we've seen mention of ships moving to Ponape, and it's been it's over here it's been AA units going here what in the world is he putting AA units on this island for I can't understand what it could possibly be I have no intention of going over there but it may not be a bad idea to peel off one of these subs and just kind of camp out over here and see what's what's happening right well more second for you we got mentioned that the southern army is located at Batavia so that headquarters has not moved yet I would have figured he would have already moved that back over to Singapore, but apparently he hasn't. And lastly, we see that the 16th Army is located at Manila. So that's the Army headquarters on Manila. Again, why he has an Army headquarters on Manila at this point, it makes no sense to me. He should be getting that thing packed up and moved on to the next destination ASAP. There's no need to have that there's garrison. So uh, those are some of the things that I saw in the SIGINT. Quite a bit of activity this turn. All right, looking at the ops report, there's just a few items that I noticed that were good. Um, there was a mention that our submarine narwhal has been fully repaired and it's ready to go. We've got Calcutta to size 8 airfield, and that's a really good thing, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Sion, that, which he now controls in China, is up to a size 4 airfield, which is not good for us. And lastly, we get two... P-class destroyers coming in at Cape Town, and the more destroyers, the better. These are British destroyers, so they have fantastic uh, anti-submarine capabilities. So these will be a welcome addition to my fleet at Ceylon. All right. I wanted to touch on the situation now at Calcutta since we talked about it in the ops report. I had now got this thing expanded up to a size 8 airfield, and let me tell you what that means. When you get to a size 8, it takes whatever indigenous aviation support you have there and doubles it. So one aviation support unit is now worth two. So in the turn, when this updates, it takes uh, according to Desert Wolf, it says it takes about a day to update this. 
we'll now have 474 equivalent aviation support because we're at a size 8 airfield and that's huge what does that mean it means we can take a lot of these aviation support units here and relocate them other places right like this air headquarters we can take it and we can move it uh, to another place we can take uh, some of these base forces with aviation support and perhaps move them down to Rangoon, Molmine, Rahane, so we can support aircraft further into Burma. I think that's a huge advantage for us now that we have a size 8 airfield in Calcutta. We can cut down any amount of units that are necessary to maintain all these aircraft here as it is. Right? <sighs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And then I guess when you get to size 9, it's even better. So I'm going to keep working on that. But I will be taking some of these aviation support units and moving them to other places where they can be more effective. Overall, really good news. You should always strive for a size eight. You should always strive for a size eight airfield whenever possible. I'm working on one at Ceylon for the same reason. Rangoon, same thing. Size eight, it doubles this aviation support. So we would take the 184 and it'd be 368, which would alleviate this issue we have here right now. So there you go, good stuff. All right, let's talk about China. So um, not a whole lot of activity on the ground up here in the north right now. I think we're going to get into some siege warfare up here. He's got a lot of troops here, more than I do. This is another Lodric death stack, if I've ever seen one. But these troops held last turn, and we're slowly re rebuilding. We still need to get the supply situation resolved, and we're working on that. And I'm still moving troops into the sex to reinforce, but um, I think we can hold for a little while here. Every turn, we continue to build up these forts. Which is a good thing. And uh, the only thing that's really going to be a, a deterrent to us is the amount, of, the amount of aircraft that he can drop into this hex and bomb us away. Because we don't have any aircraft that we can operate out here to intercept those. So we're just kind of subjected to the air bombardment and there's just no way around it. All right. A little further south, down here to the west of Pinsiong. He did blow out a unit that was on the road here, but honestly, it wasn't the worst thing ever because he blew it out into Henyang. So we now have all of our troops in Henyang where we need them. And now uh, 4,200 AV here. I'm feeling pretty comfortable with that situation right now. So this thrust is not strong enough to attack and take that. So we can transfer some of these units over to Siangtong, maybe 1,000 AV worth. So we'll have 3,000, 2,000, and basically 4,000 bolstering this line. And that makes me feel pretty good now that we can perhaps hold back another attack, even if it's a shock attack. When you, if we can have 2,000 AV there with some forts behind it, it, it may be enough to hold him for a turn or two if he shocks it, shock attacks. So um, not not the worst thing ever, losing getting attacked here in this spot. Those units were there to slow him down anyway. Okay, moving over to Burma. Um, we had a really successful night bombing attack on Bangkok. We ended up taking out maybe five or six aircraft on the ground, damaging others, getting some good intel. So we know how many bombers he's got here, but here's what I think is going to happen with this bombing raid. Um, it's a win-win for us. Uh, option one, he pulls his bombers back because he doesn't want to lose them on the ground. Option two, he puts up night fighters to try to stop my bombers and with the game mechanics being what they are i feel his fighters are going to get shredded by the b-17 gunners and he's going to lose a ton of fighters he may disrupt their attacks but he's going to start losing fighters to our bombers and the bombers are really not going to be affected by it so i'm i'm kind of looking forward to that i think we need to keep up with the night bombing attacks to force him to do something he can't bomb us because we've got 170 fighters waiting for him so it would just be a, a massacre and i have night fighters up too in anticipation of that so really unless he does like an all-out night bombing offensive which i don't think he'll do i think it's his it's his battle to lose here and he better figure something out okay so uh nothing really to report here the 12th indian Br brigade is still holding out but they're just down to their last little bits and they're going to start dying pretty soon here at Palembang, we still own it, shockingly, but it's just a matter of time. We're still waiting for him to show up and do something. Uh, we guys have been working on forts here, but that's is all we're going to get. So I'm waiting for him to come to Palembang and do something. Fortunately, we shut off the fuel uh, production months ago. So 
he's not going to capture a ton of fuel. He's going to get some, and he'll have to work on refining the rest. Sadly, this last turn, he took Terracan. We tried as hard as we could, but without reinforcement and without more stuff there, he just kept landing troops. He kept parachuting and stuff. We couldn't maintain, and he finally took it. So he just grabbed all this oil, all the fuel, and it's his base now. So we're down to just a few bases left on Borneo, Sandakan, and Tawau, and Tanjuinsalor. I don't know if I said that right. And then he owns all of that. All right, out here in the uh, this part of the Dutch East Indies, uh, relatively quiet this turn. Nothing really happening here, and I'm fine with that. Now, one thing that is happening is this, and I think this is the big story for this turn. Uh, first of all, these are just a couple AMCs of some sort moving southeast down this way. It looks like a minesweeping force, so I'm going to see if we can pick this off. Uh, but more importantly, we have APDs and possibly more troop ships in this task force, which suggests a troop invasion. And here we have a carrier task force with at least one escort carrier and a bunch of escort ships. So we see a CS there, which is a, 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 a seaplane tender it's for spotting and a bunch of destroyers and other escort ships. So their exact destination is unknown, but if you draw a line due east, it basically puts them in Darwin. So I'm very concerned that this could be an invasion of Darwin. This is what we have in place here. 2,000 troops, a bunch of guns and vehicles, and 265 AV. I would very much like to not lose Darwin. Now, what can he do with Darwin? Not a whole lot, but I just have a lot of stuff here that I don't really want to lose, so... Uh, we're going to do our best to put up a good defense of Darwin next turn. I'm going to move a bunch of aircraft here. We're going to go all out on offensive and trying to kill all of these ships coming in. Because if he only has 17 fighters on here, I think we can just overpower that cap. Because you know that he won't have all of it up. Because he's probably going to try to do I don't know what he's going to do. He's using this as fighter cover for this escort, but it's not enough. So look for a major battle in the Timor Sea next turn. That's my prediction to you. All these ships are already moving out. As you can see, we're retreating away from these guys because I don't want to lose them in port just in case. Yeah, but this is the aircraft that we currently have in Darwin. And you can expect a lot more next turn. So yeah, this is going to be hot next turn. I'm looking forward to the Timor Sea. It's going to be the Battle of the Timor Sea. All the way around here. At this time, it's been quiet out at Perth, but who knows what he's got lurking out here in the middle of the ocean. I'm not sending anything out here in, until until I have some ships to escort it. Too dangerous. Not doing that again. Okay, so out here in Australia on the eastern side, very quiet. All the way up to Port Moresby, nothing. He's given us all of Papua New Guinea to own. We do see him moving more troops to Rabal. Um, I can't, I'm not entirely sure the direction of travel of this task force, but I would assume it's heading in. So he's bringing more troops into Rabal, and just it's a matter of time before we figure out where they're going. I know he's not going to Port Moresby, though. Look at that. Not a good idea. We have been night bombing Rabal. Last turn, unfortunately, was ineffective due to the due to the weather over here. I am going to try again next turn, though. I want to keep up with the night bombing because I just think it's it's in our favor to do so. Okay, so let's talk about uh, Espiritu Santo, New Hebrides, New Caledonia, all that stuff. We do have a few ship task force sighted right now. We've got this, which appears to be a raiding force of a battleship, a couple cruisers, and something else. It appears to be moving northeast, which would be this direction. Uh, I suspect this is the cruisers and the battleship. Uh, maybe it was the Haruna or something. One of the Congos probably coming back from um, their activities north of New Zealand. They're probably heading back towards Luganville or further up to rearm, refuel. Over here we got something else moving east. This is a CS, which is a, a sub, not a sub, a, a seaplane tender, which you can launch aircraft from. 
and I'm sure there's more to it. This is this looks to be another raiding force. Typically, you would put a CS um, type ship with cruisers to help spot for them because they can carry so many Jake spotter planes. So it's saying it's moving east, which is this direction. So this could be some sort of raiding force, but he's going to be spotted for quite a while if he continues this way because he's deep within the range of all of my spotting aircraft, as you can see. So if he wants to come this way, we're going to see him coming. So I don't know how effective he's going to be heading this way. We'll keep an eye on that. We do have a, Jap a Japanese sub spotted here to the northeast of New Zealand. I'm not exactly sure what they're trying to do, but we see it. It said it's moving northwest, which would be this direction. Maybe he's coming back to refuel. One thing that is not spotted is Kilo Butai. They are... They were last seen somewhere around here, and now they're not. So one thing I can do is check detection levels on these task forces. Okay. And so far, so good. Nothing is reported as spotted, which means we have at least a turn before um, we're going to get ambushed by something I, I would estimate. So it's not spotted. That's a good thing. Um, but they're definitely out here somewhere. So hopefully they come back into range of my aircraft here soon either uh, on Fiji or Pago Pago uh, once they get into here we'll spot them again so that's telling me they're still operating out here in the fringes these the hear you and that is concerning but you know what um, I know that they're there so I'm taking the necessary precautions not to send ships through here for the time being we got whatever we got going to New Zealand I can't stop it at this point it's better to just keep going and we got plenty of fighters in Wellington now that can provide us an umbrella of cover once we get within range of the island. So there you go. That's this turn. Uh, I'm really excited about the next turn because this is going to be uh, popping. I'm looking forward to a lot of carnage, a lot of aircraft shot down, a lot of, you know, everything. It's going to be fun. So I hope you stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this turn and I will catch you guys on the next one.